Currently and historically, the North Korean government has violated the most basic of human rights. While the fault for these violations lies with the North Korean government and human rights are the concern of the whole world, ultimately the responsibility for changing North Korea lies in the hands of its citizens. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948 to guarantee the rights of every individual everywhere. Among the rights that were affirmed were freedom from arbitrary arrest, an adequate standard of living, and freedom of movement. In the past and the present, North Korea has violated these and other basic human rights. Korea was a unified country for 1300 years under the Chosan dynasty. From 1910 to 1945, Korea was a colony of Japan. In 1945, when Emperor Hirohito announced his surrender, the native Koreans believed they were finally in control of their own destiny as a country. However, the U.S. worried about a dangerous power vacuum, concerned that the Soviet Union would take the chance to seize Korea. The Americans appeased the Soviets by giving them the northern half of Korea to administer a temporary trusteeship. They drew a line across the map, creating the 38th parallel. Eventually, the Southern Republic of Korea and the Northern Democratic People's Republic of Korea emerged of Sigmund Rhee and Kim Il-sung as their respective leaders. Both sides claimed to be the legitimate government of Korea. War broke out in 1950. Two years of fighting only produced frustration and stalemate, with nearly 3 million dead. The border remained more or less along the 38th parallel. North Korea remained a totalitarian state ruled by Kim Il-sung's descendants. Even before the Korean War, the government maintained power by the use of fear tactics, including prison camps that still exist today. According to Victor Cha, the former director for Asian Affairs at the National Security Council, the North Korean gulags are one of the worst human rights disasters in modern history. It is estimated that there are from 200,000 to as many as 1 million inmates in the camps today. Most have been thrown into these camps with little to no forewarning and without a trial for misdeeds ranging from alleged war crimes to humming a South Korean pop song. Not only are the original perpetrators of the crime imprisoned, but also blood relatives. The policy of most controlled camps is that crimes will not be forgiven until three generations have been wiped out. Shin Dong-hyuk was born in the Total Control Prison Camp 14 in 1981. His family was placed there because of a crime that his father's brother committed during the Korean War. He is the only known prisoner to have escaped this type of camp. In a testimony in Seoul before the Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, he describes the conditions he faced. <laughs> Accused of knowing about his brother and mother's plan to escape the camp, Shin Dong-hyuk was tortured for months. Then he was forced to witness the execution of his mother and brother. Slave labor makes these prison camps a source of hard currency for North Korea. Other reported violations of human rights in these camps include arbitrary arrest, starvation and overwork, infanticide. 아이가 태어나면 그 소래 그릇에다가 물을 떠놓고 씻습니다. 근데 그 그릇에다 물 떠놓은 그 그릇에다 그 물에다가 아이를 뒤집어 넣으라는 겁니다. 그러니까 아이 아기 엄마가 잘못했다고 안전은 계속 때리면서 이제 그 아이를 뒤집어 넣으라고 했습니다. 그 아이는 한쪽에서 이제 금방 태어나서가 계속 울고 근데 엄마가 떨리는 손으로 아이를 그 물꿀에서 다 뒤집어 놓으니까 For three and a half decades, starting in 1945, North Korea appeared to be a prosperous nation. 
But even during these years, North Korea was largely dependent on foreign aid. Large amounts of the country's wealth had been consumed by the military, the fourth largest in the world. As the Cold War ended, Kim Jong-il assumed his father's duties. He increased military spending, including spending on nuclear programs. But North Korea's old communist patrons, the Soviet Union and China, ceased to provide Korea with loans or access to cheap raw material. Without these, they could no longer operate factories to produce the chemical fertilizers and irrigation systems that were necessary to eke out a harvest from their rocky terrain. As the harvest withered, the farmers began to neglect their collective farms for their private gardens. The once privileged city people who had no land to grow extra food went hungry. The famine that swept across North Korea from 1994 to 1998 killed from 600,000 to 1 million people. Many people lived on a diet of weeds and wild grasses. Kim Ji-un, a doctor in the city of Chongjin in North Korea, treated children that were so small that at 10 years old she could encircle their upper arms with her thumb and forefinger. The hunger and deprivation turned brother against brother, even mother against child. Thousands of kochebi, otherwise known as flower swallows, the orphaned or abandoned homeless children, wandered North Korea. The promise that Kim Il-sung made in the 1960s that all North Koreans would wear silk clothes, eat white rice with meat soup every day, and live in well-heated, tile-roofed homes was a distant memory. Before the famine, there were only 607 total refugees that had been known to have left North Korea. Most of these refugees were leaving to protest the government and were male political elites. Suddenly starting around 1994, there was a spike of women leaving the country, purely for economic survival. The only possible way to leave North Korea is by crossing the Yalu and Tumen rivers. Once there in China, these refugees face the risk of deportation back to North Korea, where they will most likely face death or prison camps. They either have to spend the rest of their lives in hiding in China or be smuggled into other surrounding countries. Refugees who try to seek asylum in foreign embassies in China have been arrested at the front gates and deported. These are only a few aspects of a regime that systematically violates human rights. In a 400-page set of linked reports and supporting documents based on first-hand testimony from victims and witnesses, the UN Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights and the DPRK has documented in great detail the unspeakable atrocities committed in the country. Human rights violations are the world's concern. The efforts that have been made by the international community have often been thwarted by the regime. For example, the World Food Program delivered millions of metric tons of food between 1995 and 1998, but as much as 30% of the donated food was diverted to the military. Ultimately, the power to change the country lies in the hands of the North Korean people, its citizens and its former citizens. No outside organization can force change onto a group of people, but if the people have access to new ideas, they can apply pressure on their government to bring about changes, even if they are small. Refugees can also help by promoting new ideas based on their experiences of living in and out of North Korea. Defectors are disseminating information in North Korea through smuggled foreign DVDs, laptops and thumb drives, television and radio programs especially designed for North Koreans and defectors, and even pamphlets and other items attached to balloons. As repressive as the regime is, it cannot remain without the support of its citizens. Having better access to information is slowly changing how the average North Korean views their government and the risks they are willing to take to change it. Journalist Barbara Demick wrote that people in North Korea are just waiting for something to change. However, the North Korean people are no longer simply waiting for change. They are beginning to create the change they want to see in their country.